Hey everyone, I'm Allison with Better Half Reviews, but we're doing solo half reviews today. And we are going to be looking at all of the expansions of Everdell. Everdell is published by Starling Games, designed by James A. Wilson, and the art is by Andrew Bosley. If you don't know how to play Everdell, go check the other videos that we've done, either the solo or competitive, up in the iCard. So in the solo version of the games, you're going face to face against the evil Rugwort who will do everything he can to block and take all your points. So with that, let's take a look at Pearlbrook. All right, so just for reference, for setup, I just put up all Pearlbrook cards. You don't have all of them at the beginning. They're mixed in with the deck. And I also have all Pearlbrook events up here just to make it easy. So when you're playing against Rugwort, just like normal, he blocks the wood space and the first forest location. And at the very beginning, since he has a frog ambassador that's just hanging out, you're going to roll the die. And spots 1 through 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He's going to block the first one. So he's going to go here. He takes the pearl for himself, flips the card over. He doesn't really do anything with this besides flipping it. And as you go through the seasons, he is going to just move down to the next spot. If you haven't collected the pearl or flipped the card over, Again, he takes the pearl and then flips the card over. All the other meeples, they do the same exact thing as they do in regular Everdell. At the beginning of the game, you are given two adornment cards. They can give you different powers and they cost a pearl in order to get them. The side note though is anytime you purchase an adornment card, Rugwort will get five tokens. So, you better make sure that adornment card is worth it because he's going to get a lot of points every time you get an adornment. So differently than the basic events in Everdell, you have the Wonders. And they are pretty expensive in order to get. They cost lots of resources, cards, and pearls. And as you go further up the track for the more expensive, per or the more expensive Wonders, they're going to cost up to like three resources of each kind or pearls and cards. So it's a lot to go for in the game. But you definitely need those extra points. And at the end of the game, if Rugwort has leftover pearls, he uses these to buy whatever wonders you didn't get. So if he has like, I don't know, four pearls at the end of the game, he starts with the most expensive. If you didn't get this last one, he would get this for three pearls. He doesn't have to worry about any of the other resources. And he's got one other pearl left over. He can't purchase any of the other wonders, but the pearls give him points as well. And when you're playing the game, you get some new forest locations that have a river mark on it. And you get new special events that have a river mark on it and include some of the river cards. You're supposed to play with at least one of each of these on the spots. You can play with all of them if you choose, but I would probably mix and match. All right, so let's talk about the river board a little bit. You have the shoal, which is where you can come and get pearls. But in order to get this, you have to pay resources and pay cards just to get one pearl. And on these, in order to visit these spots with your really cool frog ambassador, you have to have what's required. So this says you need two blue cards, two brown cards, two red cards, three green cards. If you have the requirement, you can go here, you collect a pearl if it's available, and then you flip over the card. And since you're there, if you can activate it, go for it. But you have to have either certain resources or be able to discard cards in order to get the points or the pearls that it sets. And if you so choose, this expansion comes with a handy dandy score pad, double sided, lots of pages. But if you're hip and you can do math in your head, good for you. Okay, so what do I think about Pearlbrook solo? I'm not a fan. I mean, it's okay, but I feel like Rugwort is so overpowered and he can get to pearls so quickly and easily that. It's just like each time and I'm like trying to focus on getting what I need for different spots that he hasn't taken up that I'm like waiting to see if I get those proper cards so I can actually get to a pearl without having to spend all my resources at the shoal. It's hard. Rugwort's very 
aggressive in this, especially with his frog ambassador moving so quickly and getting all those extra pearls. All in all, I would rather play Pearl Brook competitively against other people than against Rugwort. But what do I like about the game? I, I like that it brings diversity with a new resource and the wonders and how you can go for like big points and stuff. But it, it, again, it's hard with Rugwort because he's taking all the resources from you. But you have that chance to go like score real big and get 25 points for getting this wonder. With the adornments, I'm sometimes like, I don't know if I want to like pay the pearl to get this because is all of this going to be worth more than the five points he's going to get for whenever I get an adornment. So it's really hard to decide what you want to go for and what you don't because Rugwort's just sitting there taking it all. My favorite thing about Pearl Brook would have to be the meeples. I know that's not necessarily a solo aspect, but that's like my greatest positive for this because they're adorable. There's axolotls and platypus and starling birds, which is a plug for the publisher of the game. And in ours, we have the otters as well. So yeah, after my experiences of playing Everdell with Pearl Brook solo, and I'm not gonna do it again unless I have something else going on, like maybe some other expansions. So he can worry about that and I can worry about all the other stuff. Uh, well, we'll see. All right, so that's Pearl Brook. Now let's take a look at Belfair. Okay, so here's what we get in Belfair. Let's talk about the biggest aspect of it. We have the game board. So if you want to replace the tree, you can use this instead. This gives you the place to put all your meeples. You can put your cards here if you want, and it, it provides spaces for two other, well, three other things that Belfair adds to the board. All right, so one of the things that Belfair adds is the market. If you choose not to use the big board, they gave you a small board of just the market. And one thing I like about that is it gives you lots of different options for you to collect by placing one meeple there per season. So you can get two berries and two cards, which, you know, it's kind of hard to get lots of berries or, you know, the much needed stone with three cards. Once you place one of your meeples here and pick whichever one you want, you place it down on the bottom on the trade side. So next time if someone uh, wants to, they can trade these resources in order to get coins and two of any other resource. All right, so then here is the flower festival. You need one of every type of color card and you can place your meeple there and you get four points. Pretty straightforward. And in the Belfry game, there are player powers. So you get a little picture up top with an explanation down below of how to use it. Some of them give you cards or access to more resources and other varied powers. So you should test them out, see how you like them. Depending on the player powers, you may get some tokens or an evil rugwort token. All right, so another thing in Belfair are the Garland Awards. Uh, you shuffle them up and you pick one to use for the game, and that just gives an option for more points based on uh, whoever collects the most of a certain type of card. First place gets six points, second place gets third point, three points. And as for the cards, here are the generalized special events. So here's some, for example, if you have five green cards, you can pay two berries, place a meeple, and you get six points. Or if you have five common critters, place some meeple, you get five points. So a lot of these are a little bit easier and more attainable with the, the options of the cards that you see. You don't have to go for two specific critters. So then you have the forest locations, and it you know, just provides more replayability. And there's even this one that lets you activate two of the green cards in your city, which is pretty cool. And then you got two new critters available. You have the cardinals and the slightly ugly toads. And since the Pearlbrook expansion was already out previously, they gave you the Frog Ambassadors for those as well. And finally, the player boards, they are double-sided. So Belfair with the solo variants doesn't change too much of the game. Um, it's pretty much just Belfair while you're playing solo. So there's just a few different options with the, the market, and meadow and forest locations. So if you're using the player powers, uh, remember that means that you are working with one less meeple. Guess what? Rugwort still gets all his meeples. 
doesn't matter. So that's something to take into consideration if you're using Belfair with powers because you're going to have one less meeple and he's got all of them. In the back of the rules, it has some different options for you if you want to make Everdell a little bit harder. Where, like, for example, one of them is called Cranky, and if you roll an 8, you must randomly discard one of your cards. So there's, like, I don't know, like six of those different options that added a little bit more variability and make it harder on yourself to win if you are an expert at Everdell. Other than that, it's just Belfair. And finally, let's take a look at Spirecrest. All right, so this is what Spirecrest looks like. And you'll notice everybody has their rabbit traveler at the very beginning of the path. And when you're ready to switch over to seasons, that's when you really focus on the Spirecrest board. So the rabbit traveler is gonna go on over to the next marker. You get to choose one of these to put along to your expedition tokens. There's only the two different expeditions you can choose from, and it's strategic because Whatever you don't choose, Rugwort's going to get. So, you know, you have to decide if you want to go for the harder or the easier ones because he's going to end up getting whatever you don't choose. I also love the strategy of when you're picking your discovery cards at the bottom of the board in between seasons. Because when you're, when you're playing against other people, you're just like, well, this one makes the most sense. Or like maybe if you're lacking on resources, you're just going to take the freebie card. But when you're playing against Rugwort, it's, it's a harder decision because if you pick the easy card for you that doesn't cost anything, he's going to get all those extra points. And as the higher up you go in difficulty to get the harder discovery card, the less points he gets. So you have to kind of decide of like, okay, is what I want worth him getting three different points? Um, so I, I love all the different choices and the different strategy that it, this game brings when you're playing solo. Um, because you're not just thinking about what you want to do. You have to think about whatever you leave or whatever you take is going to affect you with Rugwort gaining everything else. Okay, so positives and negatives with Spirecrest playing solo. This one has a little bit more of upkeep to do on the side. And to be honest, some of the times when I was playing solo, I was forgetting to implement some of the weather events. Because, <laughs> you know, I played base game Everdell so much uh, by myself that I'm just used to that flow of things and so when I'm playing solo with the weather events and Spirecrest I'd be like halfway through the season and be like oh shoot I haven't been doing that effect because there's no one else around me to tell me hey you need to worry about that effect um, so that was just it was a mistake on my part so it's just you got to get out of the zone of what you're used to and remember you have these other things going on on the bottom of the board and again, since it's Rugwort, he gets everything super easy. He just goes to the end of his expedition trail, no problems. He doesn't have to worry about the weather events at all. He just blocks you like normal. And you have to go through even more stumbling blocks. So this expansion is definitely the one if you want to up your game in Everdell, where you feel like you've got everything else down and Rugwort isn't much of a challenge. Now he's even more of a challenge. So if you're looking for something a bit different, something harder, this will make you think even more. So Spirecrest is really good. I recommend it. You can do some house ruling if you want to. Just make sure that you keep up with the bottom of the board while you're playing. Okay, so now we've talked about all of the expansions. I'm going to tell you my favorites. Okay. So Spirecrest is my favorite expansion because it provides so many challenges and I love that it doesn't necessarily change the focus of the game. It just adds a little bit more to it. And I mean, again, meeples, giant critter meeples. I love it. I wish some of the weather events were happier, but that's okay. Uh, but I love all the beautiful art and it's just a, a great challenge. Uh, Belfair, I would also say is one of my favorites. But I don't necessarily consider it a full expansion. I feel like it just basically rounds out the game, the base game. So and no matter what I'm playing, I have Belfair, or at least some of it, included when I play. So I would say, like, Spirecrest is my favorite expansion. Belfair is just a necessity. And then Pearlbrook is probably my least favorite, as you know, with what I said earlier. I just feel like it's just a little bit of a different way of playing the game, and it's not necessarily my most enjoyable way to play the game. So there you have it. Those are all the expansions currently. 
I love playing Everdell. It is a fantastic solo experience and I love that there's different options and variabilities to fit your style of gaming. So go check it out, try it, and hopefully you have a great time and you better defeat Rugwort. All right, so I'm Allison. You've been watching Solo Half Reviews from Better Half Reviews. And I hope you have a great day. Happy gaming.